Just want you to know our, our deacons met this week and we're praying about God's plan for us, but right now we're going to leave things just as they are because the weather's beautiful now. We've lived through the winter and I encourage you on these beautiful days like today, bring your lawn chair and sit out. Bring a cup of sweet tea if you need to. And we're just praying about the next step. We're having um, our young people are going to present an ascension skit on May the 2nd. It's not exactly 40 days after the ascension, after the resurrection, but that's when we're going to do it. Because May 9th, they're going to have something special for all the moms and the grandmas and, and uh, for Mother's Day. Invite your mother to come, and I hope it's such a pretty day. We can just sit under these beautiful trees. we got some shade now. First Sunday of June, we will be recognizing our graduates this year, and we do have a few. And if you know of a graduate of high school or college uh, that we possibly may have overlooked, please send me or one of the uh, leaders a message, and they'll get it to me. We don't want to overlook anyone, but it's easy with, with us not being in school. It's easy to uh, forget somebody. And uh, then Father's Day will be the third Sunday of June. I'm telling you, we're already planning the summer away, but it's exciting. Just like my driving, uh, Layla claims, is a little bit of uh, erratic. I've read this chapter now for 50 years. When I first became a believer, when I was 15 years old, this was one of the books that was recommended to me by my youth leaders in the churches that I was a teenager in. And then when we went on to college, this is such a well-known chapter. And I, we, as I preached two weeks ago, I just had to stop and look at that one phrase, the book of life in verse three. And then Sunday night as I started and Monday as I started preparing for this message and reading this next passage, the first verse says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. And I love that verse. It's wonderful. I like to preach on that, rejoicing and all the things we have to be thankful for. We could, the other day in the car after the girls thought I wasn't driving too well, we played the glad game. I said, okay, now we're all going to say something we're glad of and Layla's first statement was, I'm glad I'm going home. And, uh, and I love that verse. And I love verse six, be worried for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God will keep your hearts and minds. So all oh, these are great verses. But as I got to chap chapter four, and verse five, the Holy Spirit in my heart just said, stop. Look at this verse. It's one of those things we just breeze through. Let your moderation know, be known unto men, the Lord is at hand. I've read that. I've memorized it in the King James. But then I looked at that word gentleness. Now, whatever Bible you have. Let your blank be known to all men. That word appears five times in the Greek original language of the New Testament. That particular Greek word. It's translated moderation in the King James. It's translated gentleness in the New King James. But let me tell you, if you, if you can right now, make some notes. Because I want to give you some words that you need to carry with you this week. And of course, it never fails when the Lord starts working in my heart on something. And I'm studying to preach. I usually mess up in that category that week. Wouldn't you know? It's so much easier to preach on things you don't have trouble with. But this word, moderation... Let me tell you the key words in this passage. There, it's translated in many different versions. Here's the translations. Or in other parts of the King James, this word in the context may be translated as this. Appropriate, 
Write these down. Appropriate, mild, gentleness, moderation. This morning, my wife and I were reading this passage and her ESV said reasonableness. And then another passage, it's used as considerate. Today, I'm preaching to Rick Reagan, and you all just get to sit on the sidelines because I'm sure none of you have a problem with moderation, consideration, gentleness. No, we all do. What is appropriate? What is, what is in this passage where Paul was talking to this church, he had just corrected two women who had had a discord. Listen, you get two humans together, you're going to have conflicts. It's just normal. It's because people have different thoughts, different attitudes. They see things differently. So he told them, get this straightened out. And then he said, rejoice in the Lord. And then he made this one little statement. Let your moderation, let your gentleness be known. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. God is here. Maybe Paul was saying, because the coming of the Lord could be today, but also he's saying, God is with us. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Some of those little songs we sang in Sunday school. By the way, I miss Sunday school and I'm praying the Lord will give us the, the wisdom to know when to go back in for Sunday school. I'm glad Kristen and some of the workers are working with our children because they need to learn on their level. And also you parents, I think, can get more out of it if they're not sitting in the car with you for about 25 minutes. Let me read you some other passages in the scriptures that you don't have in your notes but you may want to jot those down where this same word is used because my goal today is that you and I leave here with a different attitude about our attitudes. Titus 3, 1, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, Showing humility. That's what Paul wrote to young Titus, the preacher. Remind your church to be peaceable, gentle, and humble. James 3, 17, this word appears in James. But the wisdom that is from above is peaceable and gentle. Willing to yield. Oh, my, we don't like that. Willing to yield. That means I've got to give in to somebody I've got to see things your way. I've got to look through your eyes. Full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. You know the old saying, some people say, I don't go to church because all the hypocrites. Well, you go to Walmart with them. You go to Chick-fil-A. You think those kids standing out in the sun at Chick-fil-A are really having pleasure or in the rain? I've seen those kids under those tents serving that food, saying my pleasure and the rain's dripping off their hoods. This week, when we visited Liberty, I said, you know, Liberty is a cross between Disney World and Chick-fil-A. Oh, sure, they were putting their best foot forward. They were trying to make those kids feel welcome. But we went into classes that were not expecting us to come, and we felt so welcomed. Do people feel welcomed in your presence? Is your home a place of gentleness and comfort and hospitality? I realized during this time in the last year, there hasn't been a lot of interaction with families. But I want to tell you something, folks. Get with people. If you need to, go outside. This past week, we had the joy of visiting my 87-year-old uncle. And I got to see my sister, Pat, and her husband. First time I've seen them, except for one time at Christmas, we went Christmas caroling in her yard. We need each other. 
You need your family. One of the things our enemy is using during this time is to keep us isolated. We need one another. We need touch. We need love and compassion. Then another place where this passage is used is 1 Peter 2.18. Servants, be submissive to your masters. Not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the harsh. Now, does that mean the Bible is advocating slavery? No, but because slavery was a part of their system in that day, he was preaching to those slaves who were believers in Christ and saying to them, be submissive. In other words, we as the servants of Christ, be submissive, be gentle. Another passage is in 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is specifically written to pastors, bishops, and deacons. But it's really applicable for all of us. Right now, we only have three deacons in our church. We've lost two to death during the time that I've been here, these almost five years. And we're praying the Lord will give us some more uh, men to rise up and help us. But this passage, he wrote specifically to the deacons and the